Welcome back, everyone. So let's remove the bookmark and continue our tale. So, Liberators, you continue to sail upwards on the Kyokai River, passing the city of Chilford. You have gotten far enough away now, after about a, a couple hours, but during this, Cal, you're just going to be uh, resting. Or do you plan on resting when you can anchor yourself? Uh, I feel once we're anchored, we'll have like enough time for me to get a long rest in. Because we're waiting. Yeah, we're waiting for the evening, but I want to get us there first. Okay. So, yeah, your movement are sluggish, and you are now exhausted, definitely exhausted as you walk around. But you're still guiding the ship, going at a stealthy pace up the Kyokai River. So, after about a couple hours pass by, you feel that you are far enough away where you're not going to be seen. It doesn't seem like there's anything around you. It's quiet, though the fog is thick, and the snow is still coming down there, and a sense of despair oozes around you. What would you like to do next? Cal, I think this is a perfect spot to anchor the boat. You need to get some rest, and Chilford is far behind us now. I think you're right. I definitely need to get some rest. I'm starting to see two rivers. <laughs> okay. Is there anything... Anything we need to do to help you? Or do you have it all to, uh, all under control? I should have it under control. As I use one of my revolvers to... um, Like twist one of the locked positions to drop the anchor. Okay. And as you do so, you feel the ship begin to slow down as even though something definitely hits the bed of the river, you don't hear a thud or the sound and the ship slowly starts to slow and then you come up towards uh, clamping onto a glacial a glacier you are able to park the boat safely within the waters. We should be fine now. Let me... Uh... Let me get below deck and get some rest. Here, I'll whip you up something. Come on, let me help you down. Thanks, Minako. All right. So while Cal goes down to take his long rest, is there anything else you all wish to be doing? I think Horatio would probably be trying to go over the plan again with King and Minako just to make sure that uh, that they're safe. All right. So, Minako, you lay... Cow down, whereas Cal, you go into your room and fall straight to sleep because you're exhausted. Uh, all of you meet back up on the deck of the ship and can do anything you wish during the eight hours. There was one other thing that occurred while I was in Chilford. Dran pulls out the magnetic blade. This blade, its power was able to help me sense what was going on. The corruption of the jewel in the middle of Chilford, but for a moment, my grip on its power loosened, and I and I feared that Genji almost noticed me. You shouldn't use it then. What? How did it feel when you were losing control of it? It felt like like the blade continued to pulse, and there was a pressure. Pulse. Oh, should be careful. But. I shouldn't leave it here. I mean... This weapon. It is a Dutransaglavo. It cuts both ways. What do you guys wish to do for the next eight hours? If you, if not, we can go straight towards the night when you plan your attack or your reconnaissance or unless you have something you wish to do during that time. Uh, during the eight hours during the day, I would like to go to my room for a good portion of it and rest and potentially see if I can use my medicine skill to better understand how my body is holding up and just sort of spend some time in self-reflection. All right. Monaco doing anything in particular? Um, she, uh, spends most of the time with Horatio, um, seeming to kind of like just not wanting to be alone following him Horatio would probably <clears throat> talk with Duran to see if maybe there's a way that he could try to fight back that that control on on the chaos and see if maybe we can use that to our advantage to kind of cleanse or remove the chaos from the crystal alright so, so Duran wizard 
you said that you felt like a pulsing when you were losing control of it? Yes. As I drew closer to the crystal, or to Genja, I do not know which, or deeper into the sound, the blade, it seemed to ripple like the beat of a heart. You deal with a powerful force there. That blade is a conduit. Yeah, but if it's to beating, something, if it's pulsing as the beat of a heart, maybe that's the source of where chaos draws its strength. The heart. The heart. I mean, think about it. when when Galdrum was injured. Uh, it seemed like it was a chest wound, did it not? And it was with Cal's help and some Felix releases that that we were able to break his hold that Garamo had. What if Garamo gets a hold of the heart? Heart and soul. I don't know. I was trying to figure out this chaos. What, so you're saying because of what happened to me, I won't be able to do it? Well, I don't know that. I think that maybe because of what happened, it might be easier for you to lose control over it. If anything. Or it would make you easier, well... It would make it easier for you to accept the blade, use it to its fullest potential. Yeah, but what about the repercussions that come with it? I mean, he's gonna lose himself to the chaos. Maybe. Well, when I when I looked in the future, when we were in the other time, Kai used this blade. He said part of his ability to do so was from his abyssal legacy. What, Kai? Well. You saw what was going on in there as well as I did. You know that it might come to violence. You're going to have to use every tool at your disposal. We can't let all those people die. We can't let Chilfred become a hollowed out shell covered in demons. Even if we can help those people, Chilfred is already a hollowed out shell covered in demons. What did he mean by his abyssal legacy? I did not understand it myself at the time, but it seemed he, in his blood, he had some sort of greater power, some abyssal power that allowed him to harness this blade. There was much this blade did, but it was not in my hands. If... It's his... If what you're saying is true, then just as I am of Infernal, he is of Abyssal. That would make him... That would make us some sense. But, Duran, this blade, you saw him using it. We know Kai. He wouldn't just... It wouldn't be without good reason. And I think this is a good enough one. That I need some way to keep it quiet. If it gives away our position. It is no better than us announcing to Duramo that we are here and ready to fight. I mean... Maybe it can be kept in the portable hole that might help and you can just have it with you. If you need it, you can grab it from there. King has it. Maybe maybe if I ask. I don't need your help to go ask him for the portable hole. Right. Are you sure? I will do it now. Um, try being a little nicer. Dread stops. He's about to walk away. Whatever it takes to save those people. And he's going to start walking to go find uh, find King and borrow a portable hole. All right. So, Duran, you begin to walk away, uh, making your way towards King. And as you do, you open up the doors, leaving the rest of the Liberators on deck, uh, and make your way downstairs. You hear, as you make your way towards the steps, uh, a ping, a... a, a a noise in your head, a ringing sensation. At first, it's kind of just like an annoyance, and then eventually, uh, in a matter of seconds, it becomes bigger and bigger, almost like a migraine that comes upon you. And you hear a voice enter your head, and I'll need everyone but Duran to enter into the void. Shit. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. The void, I wasn't prepared for this. Oh, my goodness. Shit. So, Duran, you stop. Yeah, unable to move anymore as this just voice comes upon, taking over your entire consciousness. Brother, 
I felt you before. You ooze with the power of chaos. Are you a new arrival from the abyss? A lord, maybe. Your power is strong. Why do you hide from me? Who is this? My apologies. My name is Genju. Demon Dancer Captain and Warden of Chilford. From the portal that you arrived from. You... You are a powerful one indeed. And our Dark Lord wishes to have powerful... Allies on his side. I'm sure you know, uh, since you went through the crossing, the gifts that he can bring. Why don't you meet with me? We'll talk over your place here in the material world. Get out of my head! Oh, well, I'm sorry to be rude. Just reach out to me. You feel the connection through the chaos. You'll know how to find me. Goodbye, brother. And I hope to speak with you soon. And the connection drops. And you no longer feel uh, the headache. And you're brought back into reality. Let me get everybody else to come back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Welcome back from the void, everybody. It's a Duran. You come back into your consciousness. Headache still rumbling. Uh... But you make your way down the stairs and continue. Or not, it's up to you. He stands there for a moment, um, kind of paralyzed, not knowing if there's anyone he can ask for help. Uh, so do you continue to go down towards King, or...? He, he continues to go down to where King is. Okay. You walk down the stairs, and, you know, easily, we're quickly able to find his room. There's a familiarity to it, but the connection you don't quite place. But anyway, making your way towards the uh, the door, you uh, uh, stand in front. Do you knock or just go in? Duran just kind of goes in, uh, not masking a kind of shocked look on his face. Okay, the door opens up, and you turn, and you see Duran there with just the shock look on his face. He just opens up into your room as you're the sitting there just i'm actually sitting there with my shirt off and my robes off and my chest is exposed and i'm like touching my glowing chest and like analyzing my physiology and seeing how i feel so i'm like shocked and surprised as he walks into the room and uh, uh, duran what can i help you and i like go to like cover myself Duran, you see, since you would see that, the scar on King's chest is a huge crevice, like a, a, a fissure going down his chest, all the way down towards his belly button at this point, as just this white light is just seeping out. That area would be, if it was dark, would be lit by this, so like the, like five feet around him, um, as he goes and covers himself up, blocking it. What is your chest? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still figuring it out. What's What's wrong? It seems we have both been using powers that came with risks. What do you mean? I, I did not, I did not go undetected from Chilford. It seems the demon dancer Genju has noticed me. The like hair on the back of my neck stands up. What? What? Did you tell the others? He has noticed me, in a sense, in a way. It seems that he felt the energy of the blade and has reached out to me. In in what way? In my in my mind. Was it? Did he say something to you, or was it just a feeling? He spoke. He did not know me, but I sense he could sense the blade's power. You mean like he spoke out to the wielder of the blade? Yes. But he he did not know it was you wielding it, and you're certain of this. Tell me. Tell me what did he say, and I'll like stand up and like take his hand. It's he has asked to meet me. He is curious of the power that he sensed. Do you think that we could use this opportunity to free him? Free him? We can use this opportunity to free him yes. of Dorano's grasp. And the only way I know to do that, he holds up the chaotic blade at chest level. No, there are other ways. As much as it pains me, do you remember we were able to save Galdrum? Do you tell me you attempt 
we should attempt to subdue yes. him. Perhaps we can bring him back to his senses and let him be a covert spy on our side. We have we have enough things to we have enough supplies to do it. We've done it once before. I'm sure Horatio, now given this knowledge and opportunity, we all could come up with an idea and I know that this would take a heavy burden off of Monaco's heart too. We need more allies. I I haven't yet fully prepared my uh, like spells today. I might be able to pray for one that could help us in a situation to bind him or keep him still for a moment for us to take action and save him. Do you not think that's the best course of action? Surely you cannot just speak to him and, and walk freely. Once he sees you, he's going to know immediately what's going on. If you use a spell and a magic like that, you will tear your chest even wider open than it is. And in that moment, I will do what must be done. I, maybe someone else can cast the spell. It's just, it's worth attempting. If my chest bursts open and I change, as so hard to look at you and say these things and you don't even know why it hurts I would I've, I've still made my decision Duran and I know that you even though you don't believe it the old you would never want me to sacrifice myself and change but I have to if, if it means saving this world and largening the tear and becoming something else well let me ask you you talking to me who has become something else. How do you know what you will be? Will you even be able to help these people? I don't. I don't. I know that I harbor the spirit of a goddess inside of me. I am a harbinger of good. And I have faith that that would make me a being, even if it's just for a moment, and I could exercise powers to save this land before being cosmically bound. I don't, I, I don't know. I have no idea what the rules of godhood are and what would happen to me, but I believe that it would be worth it. It would not be a sacrifice made in vain. You have a lot of faith. When you speak to gods and they speak back, you tend to have that. Your faith tends to grow. That if you must transform, and if we are willing to use everything we can to win this fight, let us see then if you can change him. Oh, tell the others and maybe you all can figure some way to make this, add this to our plan. Alright. I'll join you in a moment. And you could probably see that he's like choking back tears at this point. Oh, I need your portable hole. For what? To hide the blade from their eyes. You can store it in my space. But the portable hole stays with me. And if I should need the blade? Let's hope I'm around to get it for you. This is ridiculous. Why not just give me the hole? We're a party and a team, or I thought we were. Well, if I am to entrust this plan, then surely you can entrust me with that portable hole. It belonged to someone really important to us, Duran. Important to you. I'll openly start crying now and just walk over to my bag. I'll pull up the report the like sort of rolled up black silk portable hole and I'll say please return it to me and just hand it to him with like tears just coming down my face without like like sobbing they're just streaming down my face All right. so are you taking the portable hole yes he's taking the portable hole and Horatio said that I should be nicer to you they care a lot about what happens to you and you don't or rather King would say, and you? Like, what are you, what do you think? I think we have a fight ahead of us, he says as he walks out of the room. Alright, so Duran, you walk out of the room, closing the door behind you. King, you're just left alone. This is the feeling of pain coming from your chest. I'm feeling a sorrow after seeing Duran, Duran leave. Is there anything else you wish to do for the evening, or did you continue just to, cont- to uh, focus on your chest? I'm going to just sort of, like, sit there and sob for a moment and realize that he doesn't doesn't care if I change and the old old Duran did not want me to with all his might and just feeling like 
go ahead, sacrifice yourself for the group who cares. Just even though that was King's resolve, he feels shaken now knowing that Duran is like, go ahead, do it. I don't care. So I wallow in that feeling of misery for probably an hour and then go back to trying to like analyze or feel my chest and sort of like, I don't know, see if I can self-regenerate or heal a little bit. During your analysis, as you do analyze your chest, it doesn't seem like anything can reverse it. Whatever is coming out, it's going to come out when it does. And it's you've been succeeding on your constitution saving throws and have, have been stopping things from progressing. So you realize it and you're very fortitudinous. So, um, you know, so that's for you personally if you feel if you're confident you can hold it in longer but at any moment you feel like you can just crack yeah like i'm like you said i am fortitudinous and pretty strong but i know that i'm approaching the limit because we haven't had extended rests right that's sort of what i'm getting at Mm -hmm. okay yeah i'll do that until like late evening and then you know get gather for dinner whenever we do that and then obviously we're gonna do our plan in the night all right so um Duran, with the portable hole, I didn't know if there was anything else you wished to do specifically with it. Um, Duran's going to store the blade in it, and he's going to mention. He's going to go up and mention to them that they might have a plan for um for Genju, wizard. Yes, I have something to tell you. Uh oh, what's up? We may have an edge. On Genju. Oh, how, how? He has attempted to reach out to me. What? Yes. Did he? Did he recognize you? No, he he sensed the blade's energy. Oh. And sensed and sensed its power and reached out in curiosity. What did he want? He wanted to meet. Oh, that's excellent. We can probably save him. How? How did he sound? Interested in chaos. Oh. Well, there's definitely a way to save him. <laughs> he said the same thing. King? Yes. King would also like to save him. <laughs> He's our friend. Why, why wouldn't we want to save him? We do not even know how to save him. Well, we saved but Galdrim before. I trust you have a plan. I mean... I, I could possibly use the use a spell to hold him. I don't have it prepared right now. I, I would need to prepare it, but I have means to paralyze him, and maybe we can get Cal and I don't know, maybe Monaco. And as he looks at Monaco, I I have such a spell, but I I we could if we wanted to do this, we approach it the same way we did with Ren. Well, if he doesn't know who he's meeting, we can ambush him. Oh, I suppose. It's for his own good, but we must be wary he might bring a contingent of demon guards, or perhaps other demon dancers. I mean, if he brings other demon dancers, he's kind of helping us out. He could probably help all of them, but we should prepare for a fight. We should discuss this with Cal and and King. I feel like this might give us an an edge on retaking Chofer. Or another option. We could offer to meet with him, simply to pull him away from Chilford during our operation. Right. I mean, I figured that's what we were going to, going to do, but he might not come alone. Even better if we never meet with him, but we'd have to give up on saving him. I just feel like you should think about that option. I mean, should we not be able to save him, we will do what we need to, however... We're going to try everything in our possible power to save him first. I'm I'm not giving up on Genju. There's that. No. As Horatio points at Monaco. She's not giving up, and I can't give up either. And I doubt King will give up either. Yes, as he said before, you are friends. So are you, Duran. But you're making it very difficult. And Horatio kind of just gives this dead eye stare at Duran. Drank kind of glares a bit at Horatio. So, we should get Cal and King and discuss this. Maybe we think trying to save the people from Chilford, at least for one night. 
No. If, if, if Genji goes missing, the whole place goes on lockdown. There's... can only do one. There'll be no way we'll be able to save the people of Chilford. This is not if we let anyone leave alive. Genji. He... Oh, no, we, we... I know we can save him. Feel Since he's entrusted me with this, then I will do everything I can to help you save him. Duran, I... Thank you. Uh, Cal's napping. Maybe... Maybe we should get everyone together. Let's Finalize wait. our plan. And- Let's wait until Cal gets his full rest. He was... He seemed very exhausted. <laughs> You're right. He was up all night driving the boat. Poorly. You couldn't do any better. Alright, well, I guess I'll do some reading while we wait. Uh, yeah, I'll... That's a good idea. Alright. So, the rest of you go and... Try to relax and prepare yourselves and rest. Cal, you complete your long rest. Have a very a very quiet and peaceful sleep. No dreams, as you're just exhausted. And the hours pass by, one by one. So you all sit, meditate, think, and prepare until you reach the evening. So, rousing up from bed, Cal, you're waking <sighs> rested and i've given you a full a full uh a long rest you can go ahead and prepare yourselves as the rest of you are probably either in your rooms or on the deck there is no trouble that went throughout the evening no patrols or anything else you found a pretty quiet and good spot while and you are invisible so liberators what would you all like to do next uh, uh right before i leave my quarters to go up to maybe even the galley just to see where everyone's at. Maybe they're eating dinner or getting some food ready. Uh, I want to spend a minute or two just praying to Columbor, uh thanking Columbor for the power that he's given me. Um, Columbor, thank you for guiding me onto this path. I will watch my oath and commit to protecting my friends. Roll me a religion check. Seven. Seven. As you sit there and pray, you pray, I'll try to connect with Kelimbor. You don't feel anything around you. You don't feel anything like his presence, but you know he's always with you. And then silence for a while. And you complete your prayer. Other than that, do you yeah, I'll like head, head up to see the deck? where everybody else is at after I do that. Okay. Uh, the rest of you, King, would you still be in your room at this point? Um, I would be hungry for dinner and know that we have to do things, so I would gather... Um, with the group and head, you know, head to like the kitchen area, the galley. Okay, Monaco was would that would I'm assuming that's where you would be, that, which is dinner? where she would be. Yes. Okay, so yes, so Monaco, you would be preparing, preparing Dana's time. Horatio, where would you be? I would probably be in my quarters reading. Yeah. But like uh, King said, or Travis said, uh, he knows that we have to prep and. If he feels that there's a lot of movement going on, he would uh, step out and go meet up with everyone. All right. So, for now, you all have a peaceful moment meeting up together, eventually in the meeting place that you normally do. Monaco's cooking. Monaco, you prepare a delicious meal? Nothing too fancy. Um, She doesn't want it to smell so well that the, uh, smell so good that the demons come for a bite. All right. So, nothing too fancy, but everything you cook is always delicious, Monaco, as you place everything upon the table. And one by one, you all enter until eventually the liberators are together again inside of the kitchen uh, area, enjoying a peaceful meal by Monaco's creations. So, is there any last things you'd like to discuss before heading off? All right. So, Cal, uh, there was a change while you were asleep, or at least something happened? She looks over at Duran. Hmm. I had been reached out to by Genju, the demon dancer. It appears that my scouting in Chilford was not completely unnoticed, but he does not know it was me. He sensed the blade's energy, it seems, and mistook it for the power of another. He wants to meet with me. And do 
Do you plan to meet him? That That's... is what the change might be. If we do meet him, we can probably break the hold. It would give us an ally on our side. But if we did that, it would change everything for our plans for Chilford. We probably wouldn't even get a chance to free them. Well, if he's on our side, we can maybe just go then and there. If we get him... Be it that... Sorry, Horatio. What were you saying? I was just saying, be it that we can get a hold of him and this go through smoothly. If we if we can get him onto our side, perhaps he could aid in getting some of these prisoners. He'd have better access than we would. He could walk right there and say he's collecting them for some some work or worse. We could still run our distraction. D- this all might be for naught. Did did Ramo realize when we broke the hold on Galdrum? Well, I think the Ramo abandoned Galdrum, so I don't really know if he did realize it or not. That's something to consider. If we free him and then alert Doramo, that could be the worst of everything. Worst case scenario. What Doramo didn't know is that the mortal key is on our side. I look at everybody around. I might be able to get through, break this darkness hanging over him. And that's the thing. When we freed Galdrum, do you remember maybe healing his heart in any way? I, I feel that chaos takes a hold of a person of a, per, of a person's heart and clouds their mind. Maybe freeing Denju's heart will clear his mind. Do you have a way to hold him while Cal... Not at the moment. But I can. You can? I... I've been praying and thinking of ways to assist us, and I have enough energy left to choose a thing to help us. I was going to ask you guys, I, I could could learn how to create a magic circle and invert it and bind him, but it takes a full minute to cast, but it will hold him for an hour in case cleansing him takes longer than just a minute. But I could also take Bane and reduce the chance of him breaking your saves. He could be bolstered by Jaramo, and it might be worth weakening. What do you guys think? I think I think it's worth bringing in the pocket. We go in, we do our best to save him, and and if we can't, then then we can use your option and try larger attempts. I, I was thinking that our attempts would be the same thing. I thought we were going to just, you know... I don't think it's going to take an hour. And you don't think it's going to take... Because it didn't take an hour. Okay, well then, if that's the case, then I'll take Bane as my extra spell to weaken him so that way you can... Does your spell, is it a surefire guarantee to hold him? Or restrain him? Uh, I mean, no. It's not a guarantee. And... We're going to have to try many things on him. It's not going to be easy. Genju Genju is a powerful martial artist, trained demon dancer. And more than that, I mean, he's Hiei's son. He's... There's no way he's going to be just... So a then pushover. should we just completely avoid him? No. No, we have to do something. We combine our efforts. We pour every ounce of magic, theory and hard work into this, we will save him. We hope that once we free him, that he can play the part and still pretend to be under Dramo's control. I don't know if he can do that, but we I owe it to him. We have to free him. King looks around at the group. I want to free him. I can free him. I will help you free him. So then that's what we do. Where do we meet him? That's the thing want to draw him away from Chilford, no? Alright. So we move up the river somewhere? Make a safe location, maybe? I thought we already did that. Yeah. I think we should be fine here. Maybe just head a bit into the forest. And for me to call him, he said I would know how. And I do not want to have to ask for your help, but I know that I need it. 
Well, maybe you can use the blade to contact him. I don't. If he said you would know how, he would assume that you as a chaos wielder. Just as he contacted you? Maybe try to sense him, or use the blade to do so, at least. If if Kai could do it, it shouldn't be too much different than demon dancing. Take some time with the blade. I'm sure it'll come to you. My demon dancing has suffered since what happened to me. I mean, you were able to use it earlier. Do you need a partner? I do not need... I, I will need all the help I can get. We're with you, Duran. Monaco, when you think that you're ready to act, give me the same signal, and I will release my spell to try and bane him first. All right. All right. Sounds like a new plan has been formed. So with you finishing up dinner, uh, you're finishing up your dinner, uh, which was a delicious meal, you formulate a new idea, a new plan, and the evening is yours. What would you like to to do next. So we plan to meet tonight with Genju. Let's just head into the forest and stake out a good spot and set up. I think I might know of one. I used to go camping and you're here. Well, let's go then. Alright, so with the ship docked uh, and invisible, the enchantment is still active. You all go into the top of the deck of the ship. Cal, you notice that uh, it remains so. You have you still have your pistols. Uh, if you wish to turn off the enchantment, you can. If not, you can li- leave it there. Uh, as it remains hidden, to your knowledge. Cal, can you sense where the ship is once we're off of it? Or do of we course. need to... Of All course right. I can. It's right there. Even if I didn't have this blind sight, I would feel... I would feel the, the magic coming off of the ship. Okay. So you all exit, making your way across easily to the other side of the river to now stepping fully into Chilford. You've always felt this straddling energy uh, as when you ever you kind of drifted towards the Othello side it felt you you didn't you felt just normal or I'll be the, the darkness around you but as you shifted more into the shiver inside you definitely can feel uh, like a an aura surrounding you that you've entered into a different world that you has that you've have traversed into. So you all make your way up Climbing off the river banks, officially into Shiverin territory. Off hours into the distance, uh, towards your uh, towards your southern uh, side, would be Chilford, and you make your way up towards a forest. Monaco, you know these places. Even though Chilford has been riddled with demons, with the proper defensives and, and route routes, you can easily traverse and explore the wilderness. So, you have basic knowledge on where to go. So if you want to find a secluded area, I'm going to need you to roll me a survival check, but you have an advantage being native here. Sure. Uh, a 22 with a natural 20. Ooh-wee. Natural 20. Monaco, you know these woods like the back of your hand. Chilfer's your home. You've stayed here. This is the Gren home of the time you've lived here. So you can easily find your way throughout the mountainside. A small little cavern as the snow beats down heavy, it doesn't disturb you. The rest of you remember, it's very cold here. Colder than you've been, than it has been since you've entered Shiverin. But walking through, no demons are in sight. The path that you normally traversed Monaco seems to be either uh, hidden or maybe just demons didn't come around this way. It doesn't seem like it has been touched. And you find a small familiar cave where you used to play when you were younger, connected to the mountainside. Here. We used to make camp nearby. The, uh, the cave should give us some kind of protection at least. Or maybe we can corner him at the very least. No demons nearby? I think this is it. Duran, are you- If we are ready, then I will pull out the blade now. And Duran kind of rolls out the portable hole. Alright, Duran, you roll out the portable hole, it lays flat on the ground, ready for you to- Pull out the item of your choosing. Dan reaches in and pulls out the magnetic reflasia. You pull it out. Now, before, you definitely notice the lack of chaotic energy that you normally feel, though it's still left an impression on you that you can feel it around you. Pulling it out, once again, reflasia emanates this chaotic energy. 
once again uh, within this area. And you could feel like this area, or just all of this uh, section of Shivern at least, is just uh, permeated with this energy. It seems it's powers everywhere here. Okay. Duran, it's intoxicating, the energy. The more and more that you feel it, the more you feel how powerful chaotic magic is. Or at least chaotic energy. Okay. I can stay in control. All I have to do is reach out to the blade. I... Duran thinks on that for a moment. Horatio, you said it comes from the heart. Tries to take a control of your heart and clouds your mind. At least I think so. So it makes sense. I know that with the heart of every man that I've met who's used this kind of power has been... Duran, you're not alone. We're here together. And we will help you. Well, if this advice... If this advice from Wizard Horatio does not work, then I will need your help very I soon. that it's better to be more prepared than underprepared. And I will uh, hold up my hand that has the platinum ring on it. And I will touch it and cast Warding Bond on you. All right, so Duran, you feel that energy come upon you as you once again the warm touch of king's magic stings king but no need for you to make a saving throw as you cast upon the warty bond upon duran duran you feel that familiar and it's if it's just for a second duran a, a sense of a warm sense of familiarity comes just like for a hot second and king you feel it as well just like the sense of each other for just a brief moment until it just kind of dis disperse and you're just linked by the normal magic of king so, Duran is going to try to shake that off, and he's going to try to reach out through his memory of how he did the Vega, how the Vegas had done in the past, with all the people he saw. But this time, he's going to reach out, not just so much to remember how they moved and how they were, but to remembering how angry they were and they use these techniques and try to put him feel back through his feelings to find some anger to focus on some point of great pain and powerlessness and he thinks back through everything his feelings not as sharp as they were but all the way back to a moment of powerlessness when the Arabu transformed and he could do nothing and that feeling of powerlessness of watching people watching the world change without being able to do anything about it he focuses on that that lacking feeling that anger and he tries to channel that rage into trying to reproduce the movements of the chaotic vagary and what is your final goal to reach out through the blade to whoever's listening do you have a specific person in mind or just reaching out Genji, Genji is his intention, but, uh, okay. you know, he's not that skilled at this. It's kind of a buckshot. Got it. All right. So I'm going to need you to roll me two different rolls. Your first roll is, since you're tapping into that dark energy, that that feeling of darkness, I'm going to need you to roll me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. I'm going to need you to roll me a charisma saving throw at disadvantage. I didn't land. Hold on. Uh, that is an eight. Eight. Got it. Um, so an eight on your charisma save. Now, in trying to tap into this magic, this energy of chaos that you had witnessed before, now you can just roll me a wisdom check. Now, seeing that you had failed that charisma, do it at advantage. Oh, uh, boy. That's, that's, that sounds like it's good. Uh, I'm going to use my last lucky point of the day to re-roll that. All right, so from a 13 to a... 20. Whoo! All right, expending the last lucky point. So, Duran, you close your eyes and go into that anger. The anger of what you... of losing yourself. The anger of just failing at your dancing. The anger of being helpless once again. Not only from saving... from saving Makar, but from losing your warband. They suffered because of you. 
Galdrim suffered. He taught you. He taught you the ways of the Valkyrie, the ways that you cling to, your sense of self. And he just... He's nowhere to be found. And giving into that emotion, a darkness takes over you. And you try to keep your sense of self, but it's too good. It's too powerful. It lulls you to it. Pulls you into it like a vacuum. A vacuum that seeps out into an endless pit. An endless void. And you slip in your consciousness and you flow there. As you begin to move and spin in a strange, chaotic motion, the rest of you look and see Duran moving around. There's no rhythm, there's no rhyme to his movements. As Rafflesia hums faster and faster and faster and faster until Duran just starts moving around in a chaotic motion. Black and purple energy permeates from his pores. As Duran, you reach out, you hear a voice connect, just floating there in the void. Brother, I was hoping to hear from you soon. Uh, I see you're learning the ways of how chaotic energy works here in the material plane. I take it you will take me up on my offer. Meet me here now. Oh, are you all right? You sound... Oh, I have lots to teach you. Ooh, I can t feel the chaos energy coming from you, brother. Uh, I'll be there momentarily. Give me just a little bit. I'll open up what is known as a scar. See you soon, brother. The connection drops. Duran, this entire time, has been spinning around, slicing things around him. You all start to back up as he's just carving into the rock, uh, using the chaotic blade as it permeates his energy. If any of you get close to him, you'll be cut like a buzzsaw, as he's just the way that he's moving, the sheer speed and the chaotic dances uh, 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 of his movement. Think of, like, during uh, Suicide Squad, the, the Enchantress, how she moved very robotic. That's how uh, Duran is moving, spinning the blade, until finally, Duran, you wake up. Tired, exhausted, and you just feel amazing. Whatever that was. Just that not having to worry about anything, just to let everything loose in this void, was intoxicating. And I will mark down, I won't say a success or failure, but you will get a mark of chaos. Throughout all of your journeys, you have made countless saves for chaos as you dipped in back over in Thelos twice. Remember when you were trying to be pulled away and you used the power of chaos to remain within the light district and other times like that. And with this last dip into chaos, you have now earned a mark, a stigma of chaos, if you will. So you write that down in your character sheet that you have one mark or stigma of chaos. And you will find out as the, as the campaign continues what that means. But it was very intoxicating, like a drug. I'm, I'm in c control. Are you all right? I'm in control. Oh, good. Remember, it's gonna try to get a hold of your heart. Don't let it. You are in control. I, uh, I, he's coming. We have to get ready. All right. Uh, is there anywhere to hide for? If you guys are at the mouth of the cave, you can hide into the cave. You can. There are trees you can hide into or around. They still have leaves, albeit not very lively, uh, lively ones. Oh, or there's large rocks that you can easily hide behind. Then, if you roll me a uh, stealth check, not, you can probably find something, depending how well you, that you can hide behind. Uh, Manaka will hide behind a particularly thick tree. <laughs> okay. Uh. King will also stand in one of those trees, taking the opportunity to be next to an actual tree. I snap my fingers and go invisible. All right. All right. So if you're invisible, you can roll an advantage. Oh, we are not stealthy people. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is an unnatural 20. Okay. I mean, I'm still keeping account how hidden you are, but. Yes, I'm stealthy I did as heck. Choose to stay in the cave. I don't want to stay out of the way and kind of come up because I got range, you know. So I gotta be close. Noted. And of course, Duran he just pulls a cloak over his head and stands near the mouth of the cave with his blade in hand. Okay. And you're trying. To, so you're trying to uh, block your face, like and keep. Yeah, he just hidden. just covering his face. Roll me deception check. And and his ears, obviously. Okay. Roll me deception check. 
Ah, a dazzling five. Okay, so to go over the rolls, we have Horatio with a seven on stealth, Monaco with a, also a seven on stealth, uh, King with an eleven on stealth, Cow with a twenty who goes invisible, and with a deception check of five, trying to hide your intentions of who you are and your look, five. Uh, but Duran got it. He's very shaky right now, and covered in sweat and bad energy. Oh, totally. In the moments before uh, the event that are about to happen happened. You all go ahead and hide yourselves as much as you can into the cave behind trees, behind rocks, and wait as Durant stands, covered in a cloak, holding Rafflesia, tired from the dance. As you immediately all feel a vibration in the air as chills are running down all of your spines. Uh, almost like the smell of not ozone, but like a, like a more like a noxious uh, smell, uh, similar to that. Um, like a smell of sulfur. Uh, there is a rip and tear into the area that's right in front of Duran. Probably about 20 feet in front of Duran. In a clearing. Um, it looks familiar. You've seen scars open. You've seen this happen before when you were in Queen Camilla hiding within her wardrobe when you saw them appear, uh, disappear from the scar before. As it rips apart and just red and purple energy pushes through. And coming out of it like a cracked mirror... Uh, and pulling himself out is the familiar face of Genju Goren, the flame demon dancer captain. Ah, brother, you don't need to hide. Come, that was how a scar is used when you incorporate demon dancing. Come, there's much I need to tell you. And he stops for a second, looks around. Places his hand on his sword. I cast Bane at that moment. <laughs> okay. Followed with hold person. Yeah. Crown of, I call forth a crown of thorns. And I cast Bane and, and vines will start to grow around his head. Make me a charisma DC 21 saving throw. Okay. I will cast uh, Mage Armor. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, darkness bind you. And, she look, and he must make a... Uh, DC 20 uh, wisdom save against old monster. Okay, so that is a failure. Barely, though, because the demon is my charisma. Since he fails, the crown of thorns now solidify in existence, and you could see vines wrap around his head and pierce into him uh, uh, and, and solidify on his person. Uh, and it's DC 20 for uh, the shadows, which sort of envelop him in uh, almost like a uh, like a hand, like a, like a shadowy hand coming to grab him. That's and also then, a wisdom save? It's a wisdom save. And then minus the save. D4 because of Bane. Okay. And I will go ahead and roll the D4. Two and a DC 20. All right. So you... All uh, release your spells in that instant. Horatio, covering yourself in armor as you are infused with your mage armor. And King, with a moment's hesitation, you just simply you go out and release uh, the energy from your spell, casting the bane on him as the crown appears. Uh, and you see him uh, hold up for a moment, his hand still almost about to reach his sword as it just goes and barely touches it um, as he is struck. In that same exact instant, Monaco released the magic as it wraps around his body. The hilt of his blade begins to glow, but in that moment, as soon as it snatches onto him, it goes out, and he's just frozen there, holding the, the hilt of his sword as on his back, as the light on the edge of, the, you're not sure if it's some type of ruby or gem, just dissipates and goes, Ugh! and he... You successfully held now, and banged. Now, I take a key from my bag of holding, hold it up as I whisper to Kalembor. Give me the power to unlock his soul. Give me the power to free him of this, of these demon bane, of this demon bane. Give me the power to free him. And I take the key and I just start sticking it behind him into his back, uh, Accessing the powers of the mortal key, my hands uh, begin to glow a white light, and white light uh, emanates from my eyes as even a little electricity starts to crackle around me as I like push this key, not through his body, but through 
his spirit to where his heart would be and uh, where I think the lock on his soul would be. Alrighty then. So, Cal, as you go ahead and release the powers of the mortal key upon the trapped Genju, you go ahead and touch its back with the glowing energy of Kalimvor. I need you to roll me at advantage a let's see, so you want to dig in this way. A wisdom check. That is a unnatural 20. Okay. All right, so with a unnatural 20, you go ahead and invoke the power of Kalemvor, invoking the oath that you uh, that you've given him and just giving your all. You feel something almost like a cog wheel spinning in your chest uh, as something goes into place. Energy goes into fluctuation, and it releases directly into the body of Genju. Everything erupts in a bright light within that area, uh, almost like a beacon for a moment before it quickly dying down. You all cover your eyes for that moment as the light dies down, uh, sucking back into Cal as Cal stays there, remain eyes completely white, uh, glowing, as he's touching, as wind is starting to pick up and blow around Cal as he's connected into Genju. Cal, you feel your mind disappear, leave out of your body. It flows, going somewhere else, going through the ether, just a flowing vortex of energy uh, as your mind, uh, of surrounding just you and the area around you as well as Genju. And so eventually your mind locks into a light falling into place as you land um, in a castle. There's uh, some type of uh, fur skin rug, a bed, wind uh, blowing a curtain to your left uh, out of a window as a woman sits there uh, holding what looks to be two children and the gentleman uh, walks, a gentleman walks on over just hidden in the shadows, kind of in the background. Eden, how are my boys? They're, they're doing quite all right, dear. But I know, I know what must be done. One, one can remain and one must leave. Destiny, I know th- about the seal. I hope they're kind to him. They'll be fine and we will raise the other to become the new daimyo and maybe strip him of his curse. Have you thought of the name of the boy? Genju. Genju Goren and Sorin. Sorin Goren. Well, maybe your destiny to serve the gods from above, to inhabit the soul of the mortal key. Know that you will always be in my heart. As the scene fades away and changes, you see a. Well, you can recognize at this point is a young uh, a Genju uh, practicing sword play. Um, with what seems to be two or three other uh, guards uh, within the within the castle uh, exterior. Um, as the battle goes on left and right, um, you see him get knocked down. And in the background, you see uh, now stepping out of the shadows what looks to be a much younger, much more human looking uh, uh, Hiei, who goes, You must be strong if you want to be the future Daimyo. You must be powerful to unlock your cloud vagary. Again, Genju. Again. And Genju continues sword play fighting. Uh, And within that that instant, um, Cal, you're thrusted, your consciousness, into one of the fighters. At this point, it looks like a young Genju is fighting you. I need you to make me a dexterity check. An eight. All right. You stumble backwards as this young Genju knocks you down onto the ground. Uh, you fall back, and you hear me go, Ha! See? I knew I could do it. Good, son. As should be, Ogoren. Get rid of the weak one. A warrior bested by a boy does not deserve to be into my army. And the scene fades. That is one failure, as you are thrusted into another memory of Genju. This time, uh, you are sitting uh, what looks to be some type of dojo. Uh, from your travels, you recognize this as... Uh, Frostmore, definitely the architecture, possibly inside the temple area. Uh, there, there is a familiar face of the daimyo, uh, as you know in it, uh, Kaijin. He goes, Genju, you have tapped into a power not foreseen in our bloodline. 
as a flame demon dancer, but do not be discouraged. You, I see great potential in you. Don't listen to your father. Show me the power from within. Dance to your heart's content. Show me your demon dancing. And your mind is once again shifted, but this time you're actually Kaijin, looking on as you are squaring off as Genju stands up, getting into his fighting position. And as he does, he begins to move and dance around as the flames swirl around his body as he goes to make a lunge against you. This time, roll for me a wisdom check. Unnatural 20. Okay, unnatural 20. Uh, Your body thrushes up as he goes, going with a flaming kick. You are able to step up, block the strike of Genju, and feel this energy of demon dancing waft over you. Uh, it, it connects. It's a familiar sense, like a, f- a familial sense. As you know, uh, Kaijin and Genju are uh, relatives. Or is it just that? You're not sure. In any case, the battle continues, and for a moment you're just locking back and sparring with Genju in a flourish of punches, kicks, and dancing until finally he goes, Stop! Or you go. You go, Stop! And then your mind thrusts back off, and now you're, a vis- now you're viewing it. See, that is the power of your demon dancing, Kai. Don't forget who you are. Don't lose who you are. Your father is troubled. Be greater than him. Be greater than me. Yes, my daimyo, he says, uh, bowing. And that is success. And then finally, your mind shifts one more time. This time, a dark familiar figure walks and looms ahead of you as you look into this dark room and you hear now 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 genju Hmm, one of my biggest prize oh how sweet it is to put you under my clutches as the ramo steps walking uh into this dark cave it illuminates and you're able to see his dark figure uh um and his with his white shining hair kind of giving his this weird ghostly uh, image as you see bound and chained to a wall is Genju. You, you'll never get away with this. I don't know what you did to my father and how he is, how he is, how he became to be your servant. Well, I'll stop you. The demon dancers will stop you. <laughs> oh, my boy. Delusional. I am a god. Don't let this mortal body fool you. I will unlock my powers, and you will help me. I need the Dark Symphony, and you will be the one to get it for me. Uh, You see, Tartarus must be released, and I must consume all. But nevertheless, you don't don't mind yourself with my dark dastardly plans. All I need you to do is submit. And this time, you're inside of Genju's body as you start to feel the pull of Doramo seep into your brain, rewriting your internal mental chemistry. And finally, I need you to roll me a charisma check. Your spellcasting modifier as a paladin. So I need my charisma plus my proficiency? Yeah, it would be like you've okay. a spell attack. 17. 17. All right. So, Cal, as you resist and try, as Doramo pierces into your mind, or Genju's mind, you feel everything being rewritten. His love for his family, his love for his country, his love for of good, triumphing over evil, starting to be un- rewritten. Yes, is submit, submit, submit! And as you feel yourself just going deeper deeper into despair, losing all sense of self. There's a light. An energy. This small little light. The very core of what's good about you, about Genju, is there. It's warm and familiar. The only thing that goes through your mind as you, as you, or you as Genju, feel is just the name Eden. As he grasps onto it, as you grasp onto it, as both of you grasp onto this, a light shines up, erupting. Ching! And you see Doramo just goes, Ah, what is this? 
and he dissipates um, your your a fluctuation of memories just fold through your brain of all of everything that Genju went through as he grew up as he became who he was until you snap back into reality uh, the energy breaking apart uh, as Monaco your but your hold that you have has been unlocked unleashed um, the bane has been destroyed unleashed unlocked as Genju falls onto the ground huffing and puffing uh, onto his knees. Cal, you fall to the ground, huffing and puffing as well. You don't know who you are, where you are. What happened has you and Genju lock eyes for a moment, and it's just strange electricity that shoots between the two of you. As he says, What, what happened? Where am I? And he looks around and sees everyone. Are, are you alright, Cal? Genju? Monaco? Genju, you recognize me. Monaco? And he, like, collapses onto the ground knocked out and that is where we will end tonight's session oh Oh, Oh, brother oh my god (laughs) oh my god yo I was muted on discord but the entire time that Omar is like describing the comeback I'm like let's go let's go (laughs) am I gonna have to edit that out in your audacity yeah I'm sorry (laughs) that was so good though this episode was oh man good oh Oh. (laughs) yeah oh my goodness oh Oh, man (laughs) game (laughs) 2 good job Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone who's listening out there. Thank you to our Patreons. Uh, thank you to the members and cast members and everyone who supports us from the first chapter to the last page. We love you guys. Be kind to one another, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm the Tail Weaver Omar, and DM here at A Tale of D20s Network. Hi, I'm Zectown. And I am the DM here at A Tale of D20's Network. Zek, you know I am the dungeon master for the drama-fueled, anime-inspired fantasy epic Descent into the Void, right? Yes, but Omar, you know I am the dungeon master for the comedy-riddled, trope-smashing fantasy epic The Natural Ones. I guess both of them are perfect shows for a tabletop podcasting network. It's a good thing that people can find us at a tale of d20s.com then. <laughs> yeah. You can also find us on Twitter at a tale of d20s. That's at a t a l e o f d 2 s a tale of d20s. And you can find each show on Twitter at the nat ones cast at t h e n a t 1 s c a s t the Nat Ones cast or Descent Void at D E S C E N T V O I D Descent Void on Twitter. So if you want thrilling drama <laughs> or a side splitting comedy, a, a tale, tale of D20s, D20s has you covered. covered.